welcome to my series of Elliott Wave Analysis. In this particular series, I'm going to try my best to introduce Elliott Wave Analysis to you. If you're new to trading, then you might be wondering what Elliott Wave Analysis is. Or if you have been in a trading for a good while and then you haven't used Elliott Wave Analysis, and then you have decided to use another tool uh, or to add another tool in your toolbox, then you are in the right place. I'll try my best to simplify the uh, methodology that is used in uh, figuring out different patterns. So as you guys are aware from uh, it, Elliott Wave Analysis itself is a theory. It's a, it's a theory that was introduced to, by, to us by a guy named Elliott. He was an American accountant early, earliest 20th century um, and he spent years and years uh, going over the chart, historic charts of stock prices and then he figured out that there was some sort of uh, waves or some sort of patterns that were e repeating over time uh, for an expanded period of time and they these patterns were nested within each other. So that's why he spent more time on it, recognized different patterns, named them and then he presented a theory. Uh, from that day on it, it uh, got uh, a lot of following especially uh, in late and after late 90s so and it has been used quite frequently right now how good is it it is quite uh, dependent on the user and uh, we'll discuss all of that in a bit first of all the most important thing about Elliott wave analysis is it's a nested is a series of nested structures you can find these structures or these patterns on a 15 minute chart on an hourly chart you can find these patterns on a daily time frame chart on a weekly time frame chart on a monthly time frame chart and so on. Uh, so we'll, before we can actually discuss that, we'll just try to discuss the chart itself so you can actually understand the chart a bit and then we'll move on quickly. Uh, right now in front of us here is a chart of US dollar against a basket of different currencies uh, and from here you guys can see from this right over here, this is an hourly time frame chart. What does that mean? First of all, hourly time frame chart means that one single candle in front of you here is equal to one hour. The chart in front of you is an, a candlestick chart, the different sort of chart. This is the candlestick chart. We can change the type of the chart from candlestick charts to line chart. It looks completely different. We can change from line chart to another common one that's being used is bars chart. So these three are normally most often used bar chart can line chart and candlestick chart. Candlestick chart is the most famous and very easy to read the market. You can just give it a one glance and you can see whether the market turned up or turned down. So right now here one single of them is called a candle uh, hence the name candlestick chart. There are two types of uh, candles in front of you. One the one that are red ones and the one that are actually uh, greenish ones. So the greenish ones are bullish uh, candlesticks. They are the ones that are pushing the prices, they are reflecting the price movement in the upward direction. And the red candlesticks are the trying uh, are the candlesticks that are reflecting the price behavior of moving in the downward direction. Whenever the prices move downside, we call it a bearish price movement. Whenever the prices move upside, we call it bullish price movement. So within a candlestick, you guys can see there is probably some sort of single line within that. All right. So <clears throat> this single line is the is called the shadow of the candlestick, and the solid part is called the body of the candlestick. With the bullish <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, with the bullish candlestick, we can see. Uh, that the this is the opening part of the candlestick when the previous candle closed right over here and the next hour started prices were right over here within that hour what time it happened but the prices went up at this time they did not stay at that mm, there in that position instead prices moved all the way right over here and the prices closed the hour right at the top so that's why the opening is at the bottom for the bullish candlestick and the, for the bearish candlestick, the opening of the candlestick is right at the top. So the here, right over here, the candlestick opened right at the top. The prices went right over here, all the way right over here, did not stay right over here and jump over here. 
so these are shadows on this side and these solid bodies are called real bodies now as as the price action moves in we can draw we can see that these angles you can draw them by hand but nowadays since we have computer as soon the data comes into the interface of the website or the data terminal that get translated into a bar that's is simply buying and selling this is showing that people are interested in buying it right over here over extended period of hours and this is right now showing that people were actually interested in selling it a dominant trend people are buying, selling and buying at both times but what remains dominant over this period of time is the price moving downward so the trend that remained dominant over this period of time was bearish and the trend that remained dominant over this period of time was bullish that's how it is both activities are going on at the same time people who are interested in buying something and they're expecting for the price to go up they are called bulls and the people or the traders who are interested in thinking that p the price of an article is expected to go down and are interested in pushing the prices downward they are called bears so right now we can simply see right now that there is a a, a clear mm, uh, indication or a direction of the trend on the inside side downside and the uh, <coughs> direction of the trend on the upside now this behavior stays for a while right here from example this one stays for a while right over here till over here and this behavior of prices pushing up stayed right over here on this card and this one stayed down right over here so in equal we can clearly sense now that we kind of seeing some sort of a wave right over here being formed in this we can actually connect this point to this point and in Elliott wave analysis we will call this a wave because prices have stayed in this direction for a while and then they change the trend they, they change the direction of the trend right over here and then they change the direction of the trend again once over here all of these waves that you guys are looking are completely dependent on the time period that's being used for example I can convert one hour to one minute and we'll see the chart change it's the same chart okay it's the same chart right now for example give me a moment let me zoom in a bit so we can actually see the same data if we can bring it over here all right let's assume I'm not sure what exactly we are looking at the same pattern but let's assume that on this chart we have a major trend that's going all the way out right over here okay so th within these you can go you guys can notice that we came down and went up and came down and went up and came down and went up these are small degrees of the waves. even the larger wave is down but within the larger waves we have waves that went and broke so this is the same direction of the wave as the larger wave and this is the direction in the opposite direction to the, to the larger trend similarly this wave is ha facing towards the main direction uh, towards the direction of the main trend and this one a wave is pushing towards the opposite direction so the one the waves that are actually indicating on there are facing towards the main trend are called impulse waves for that for that particular trend okay and the wave that is actually uh, facing on the opposite side for that phase they are called correctional phase okay so it's completely time dependent we'll work on our vocabulary about impulse wave and correctional waves in a bit a little more so right in this particular time frame for a wave like this one we can see that within let's suppose this whole wave was a correction okay let's suppose this whole wave that actually started from over here and over here is actually facing in the opposite side as compared to the main trend is actually going up and this is actually facing on the opposite side it means we are looking at a correction and within correction we have directional waves and correctional wave directional wave and correctional wave directional wave and correctional waves so we are going to discuss them one by one my f initially I wanted to show you guys the chart that as time goes on and as the trading activity goes on that trading activity gets plotted on the chart and from there we can actually see the candlesticks the beauty of it is that you don't have to remember what happened 
20 days ago, what happened 30 days ago, you can at a glance see what psychological behavior was being expressed by the market. What different forces are there? The people who have actually bought something, a US dollar uh, around two months ago, three months ago, five months ago, you can look at it. And the beauty of this is, is just to look at the historic data at a single glance. You don't have to actually go from the trading records one by one and see where exactly how many people have bought it because the main objective of the, the trading is to go with the trend. That's the only way you want to make money because the trend is going on the bullish side. If you buy, then it's going to be easy for you to make money. More and more people are willing to pay more prices for the same thing. It means that when prices go up, you can sell at a higher price. The whole purpose of trading is to buy low and sell high or sell high and buy low. So we'll discuss more about it. Initially, um, I hope that you guys understand where these candlesticks come from, why the time frame is, anal is important. Let's go back on, an, on a daily time frame. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys what are different candlesticks. So now each single candlestick is actually sh reflecting the trading within that day. For example, this one is, expect is displaying what happened on that day. How prices moved up and down, we don't know. If you want to know that, we have to go on a smaller time frame. And that is normally 15 minute chart or an hourly chart or a four hourly chart. And you can basically consider it as zooming in. For that, we simply have to click right over here. We can draw a line right over here, go into the four hourly chart and then zoom back on the same place on the same date. You can look at the date here as well at the bottom of the screen, the black color, which is moving left and right. So you can keep that date in mind and then zoom that in. Uh, different softwares does different way. Sometimes you can actually draw a box around it and then, you know, do it like that way. So this is a daily time frame chart. Let's have a look at a week weekly time frame chart. This is a weekly time frame chart. Here, one candlestick right over here is representing the trading activity for the whole week. Let's have a look at a monthly time frame chart. Normally, most of the uh, charting software comes the largest time frame is monthly time frame. Here, one bar is actually showing what happened within that month. And you, as you guys are looking at the data, now you can clearly see we had a very nice trend. On the upside, we had a beautiful trend. On the downside, uh, up trend, a bearish trend, a bullish trend, a bearish trend, a bullish trend, a bearish trend, another bullish trend, bearish trend, bullish trend, bearish trend, bullish trend. All right. So the purpose of a trader is basically to get into the market when the prices are about to go on, and then stay in the market till the trend is complete simple is that although it looks and it seems very simple it is the most difficult thing to do in trading it's called timing the market you're trying to time the market you're trying to find the time you're trying to forecast when the price will go up for how long it will go up and that's where the Elliott wave analysis comes in this was if you were bored from this very initial very basic introduction to the charting don't worry about it uh, it's supposed to be very fundamental, but we'll quickly p uh, pick up our pace. So let's have a look what happened. What is about Elliott Wave Analysis? We make a quick introduction about Elliott Wave Analysis, and then we'll finish this video, and then we'll continue it uh, uh, tomorrow again. Here is a simple idea. I'm going to start the five structure, and this is this is what Elliott said. Elliott said that in the any market, the prices moves up in fives wave this is wave one this is wave two this is wave three this is wave four and this is wave five so Elliot noted that in any stock market in any stock market commodity market currency market any market that is being traded by masses a lot of masses mean a lot of people for those <laughs> who are new to language so any market that are traded by masses and are freely traded markets tends to move in five waves so here is wave one and two and three and four and five so Elliot used number after that wave was complete okay so this is first wave complete 
he used a number one and after wave two was complete he used a number two after wave three was complete he used a number three and four and five so prices move or trends occur in five waves that's the first part of Elliott wave analysis what happens after the five wave structure is complete it must be a natural question in your mind so as soon as the five wave structure is complete it is always followed by a three wave structure okay a five wave structure is always followed by a three wave structure simple as that after the five wave structure is complete we can uh, call that is being followed by a three wave structure this is first wave this is second wave and this is third wave let me go into the settings and we can actually see the wave actually why is not showing give me a moment it should show okay let's go to minor okay okay that's strange let me go to the something is wrong and oh color look at me we are showing like it's do not show any color like it will show a color right now okay there it is problem solved so after the five wave is complete it is always get followed by a three wave structure this is a three wave structure the waves that actually make a five wave structure are called impulse wave and the waves that actually make a three wave structure or that occur after the impulse waves are called correctional waves simple as that so a five wave structure always gets followed by a three wave structure you must be asking what happens after that well in that case we since we already know that waves are nested within each other every time a five wave structure is complete a three wave structure is complete we can call it a complete pair and we can definitely call it wave one of a larger degree okay let me go back here and then we can say that this wave actually started from over here we can easily consider it as a wave one right over here because a five wave structure is complete and a three wave structure is complete right over here too so in this regard we can say that a larger degree wave is complete right over here okay and for that I'll have to go up four and five this is the wrong way to draw this let me stretch it a bit and then you can actually see okay there you go let me stretch it a bit further down so this is a four and this is a five so this is what happens after the let me change the color so we can actually make a discussion about it let me make it green okay there you go so the blue wave after the blue wave is complete which is five wave structure it always gets followed by three wave structure which is a b and c which is right over here red color and after the five wave structure is complete and three wave structure is complete we can call it a wave one of a higher degree and then we can call the correction wave of as wave two of a higher degree within the wave three right now we will have smaller waves we will also make five waves of a smaller time frame and then with three waves in wave four of a smaller time frame and then wave five waves of a smaller time frame in wave five once that is complete we'll see the correction of this green degree of a we need to see the correction of this degree that will be wave a wave b and wave c so let's try that okay so this is the start of right over here a b and c and let me go and this is orange color so after this is complete fiber structure is complete then it's followed by a green this one right over here which is three wave structure and then we can call it wave one and wave two of even higher degree so first of all you guys need to know uh, we'll slow down a bit and I'll dug deep 
you, some of you guys might have noted that we use numbers to label the impulse waves and we use alphabets right over here A, B and C to represent correctional waves. Once the structure is complete since this whole becomes wave 1 and this becomes wave 2 and is part of the larger impulse structure we use it a number to represent it okay so it becomes 1 2 and then 3 4 and 5 you guys have also noted that this wave is of a smaller degree means that when you zoom in in within the wave 1 we can actually see this wave so this is called of a smaller degree and this wave would be called of a larger degree GAN uh, sorry not GAN I study GAN as well and I just happen to <laughs> remember him so Elliot classed uh, named different degrees of waves uh, they start from they depend on the time and they exist in uh, starting from one hour 15 minutes to one hour uh, there are waves that exist on a daily time frame there are waves that exist are, are clearly visible you can say not exist there are clearly visible on a weekly time frame that are the ones that exist clearly on a monthly time frame there are waves that are clearly visible on yearly time frame on tangibly time frame on a hundred year time frame and it goes on and on simple is that so as per Elliot the human nature of trading keep expanding towards the largest degree all right so uh, right now I am using tradingview.com if some of you guys are interested uh, maybe I can get a promo for you guys but for now you don't need a fancy software like this one okay let me go and change the relation first of all let's have a look click this one and you guys some of you guys probably noted that I went into the settings and I made them what degree I choose them minor let me go that in right over here and pull this all the way right let me pull it all the way here well, these are the different ma uh, degrees of wave that are available to us this is minuscule and sub micro micro sub minute 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 minor intermediate primary cycle super cycle grand super cycle sub millennium millennium super millennium I'm not aware of it but I think I haven't seen these very uh, I've I haven't seen them before especially when I was using my other software so I'll have to refer into Elliot wave books to see if they actually Elliot came up with these names or not all right so the most commonly that I normally use are sub minuet minuet minute minor intermediate primary cycle super cycle since the previous wave that we noted is a minor degree we'll have to go click on this one and that would be of one higher degree so we can go on the settings and just above minor we have intermediate okay we clicked on intermediate let's have a look on this correction this correction needs to be of a minor degree which it is right over here and I'm using a different color for your understanding we can use the same color to indicate the same degree of wave so this blue color is representing minor we can use a blue color right over here actually I'm gonna go and use a blue color so it actually removes any um, misunderstanding right now from the color actually this one is purple look at that okay let's go ahead and change that to blue okay now both of them are blue maybe a little different shade but hopefully you guys understand the point this blue degree color is representing the minor degree the green color is representing the higher degree and which is right over here we have changed it to primary and we can go right over here we can go to the settings and we can go uh, into the selection which is not primary sorry intermediate my apologies so intermediate degree we can click OK actually you can need to change the color as well right so there we go and okay so this completes our uh, first introduction of Elliott wave analysis I hope that you guys were able to understand or grasp some important points about Elliott wave analysis there are two important rules about Elliott wave analysis that I will present in the next video I think the first video on its own is a little too much 
so let's have a look right over here so what are these waves mean right now we can clearly look at the waves right now this is wave 1 and this is wave 2 a wave 1 of a smaller degree a wave 2 of a smaller degree a wave 3 of a smaller degree a wave 4 of a smaller degree another wave 5 that completes one another wave right over here so we have one wave completely and we have correction we have another complete wave right over here we'll go on from over here okay right now I'm just giving you guys an example it's not analysis just take, take this as an example alright we might need to change the labeling of it but on its own we can see that it's an impulsive move a corrective move an impulsive move here the impulsive move the waves are clearly divisible but on this one the waves are not clearly visible so we might need to go on a lower time frame this one is monthly so we might need to go on a weekly time frame to see what's actually happening here wish you good luck with your trading two very important rules of Elliott wave analysis are going to be followed after this have a good one and bye bye